quite frankly, it is a crime that it's taken this long to do a dedicated review of this book. Hello my lovely friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today it's time for another 5 Reasons Why. If you are new to the channel, 5 Reasons Why is the occasional book review series that I do where I give you 5 reasons that you should read a book that are not the, well, usually at this point I would describe the romance that is in the book, but um, there is none for this one. Today we are going to be talking about like one of my favorites that you've heard me yell 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 about all the time and that is The Butterfly Garden by Dot Hutchison. I know, I am also shocked that there is not a solo review for this book on my channel. We start out with them at the very beginning of an investigation. A whole bunch of young girls and women have been found on this man's property. He has been keeping them captive for many, many years. And we start out with them interviewing one of this man's victims. The other point of view we have is this victim narrating her story, how she got to be a part of this butterfly garden and what her experiences were while she was there leading up to the events that led to them discovering um, whatever his name is, is Butterfly Garden. They just call him the gardener. It's part of a four part series where this FBI team follows or tries to catch different serial killers. This came out before the existence of my booktube channel, but books two and three do have video reviews that I will have linked in the description box. Also, full disclosure, the author is a friend. So like, I'm highly biased, but also it is a very good book. Before we get any further into this review, I do want to mention that there are heavy trigger warnings in this book for sexual assault, child abuse, pedophilia, just general violence against women, captivity, and also suicide. So if, just just know that going in there, this is a very dark, messed up book. I'm coming right out of the bat knowing that this is not a book for everyone, but if you like your thrillers dark and twisty, this is going to be something that you'll want to check out, and I'm about to tell you why. So reason number one is our snarky storyteller. So the, the young woman that they pull out of the wreckage and manage to, that is basically kind of, I guess, the one that is taken charge, that seems to be the leader to the FBI team. She is a no holds barred, like tongue in cheek, just, she is a character and she's not afraid to tell it like it is. And I love that about her. In every scene we see her in, she's very honest. She is very raw. She is also very careful. So it's not necessarily that she is, an unreliable narrator. She is just very specific about how she is unfolding or revealing the events that she is narrating. She understands the ramifications that her actions and some of the other girls' actions are going to have for them and she wants to make sure that she is protecting people as much as she can. She just is trying to gauge how much she can trust the people she is telling the story to and that really comes across in her narration and in her interactions with Vic who is the head of this team. It also leads to a very interesting narrative structure because one of the timelines, the one that we are following with um, with her and the FBI team, that one's going in like linear order. We are starting at the beginning when they have brought these girls in from this tragic event that has happened that has led to them being discovered and we're following them through this interview with this main character that needs to happen in a certain amount of time because they are running out of, of time that they will have before certain forces get involved. She, however, is not telling things in a linear fashion. So we get bits and pieces of her life, both before and during her time in the garden, kind of sporadically as they occur to her as she's talking. Uh, it's almost like when someone with ADHD tries to tell a story and they go on seven different tangents trying to make sure you have all of the relevant information, except this has been edited, so it's much better done than, than when you sit and have to listen to me talk. Reason number two is the found family vibes in this book. Now in the butterfly garden, it's more than just like, hey, this is the found family trope. Like it's, it's got a little bit more depth to it than that. What family is, the way that family affects us, like the family we're born with versus the family that we choose, those are all very strong 
themes in this book and they are all woven together so very well. You definitely see them in Maya's life, in the experiences that she is narrating, in what she's talking about, about her childhood, in what she's talking about in her time before she was kidnapped by the gardener and in her time in the butterfly garden. You definitely get to see how family has affected her, how her, her ideas of family have been shaped and molded and all of that and you get to see what the effect of family is on her. You also kind of get that from the FBI team as well. Because they are such a close-knit team, you kind of have Vic as this dad. And then you have Mercedes and Eddie as like these two siblings that are just constantly at each other but love each other very much and it is the way that that develops over the course of this series just they are friendship goals and I love them so much. It's one of my favorite dynamics. We don't get as much of it in this one because Mercedes is at the hospital with the other girls. But as we go through the series, we get to see more of the dynamic between the three of them and the way that they do kind of function as almost a second family. Reason number three is it is a one sitting book. So because I know the author, I bought this right when it came out. I got that delivered to my door and I started it, I think I read a little bit of it uh, before I went to Starbucks to write and then I sat in Starbucks, did no writing and read for four hours straight. And this is in one of those really hard wooden Starbucks chairs that they would have at the communal table, okay? So like I sat there for four hours, almost cried in a Starbucks and I don't regret a single moment of it. It just, it will pull you in and then you're, you're, you are no longer your own person. You are whatever the book wants you to be. The way that Dot leads you through this story is so gripping and for every answer that you get you end up with so many more questions about what is going on and why this happened. Where is this going to lead? You start out in this book knowing they are out but not quite knowing how they got out. There are little pieces that you get in the conversations between Maya and Vic, but you are very much in the same seat as Vic and Eddie as they are interviewing her, trying to figure out what the heck just happened, why are these girls here, what is going on. Reason number four is you get to see women persevering against a misogynist. It's about the communities that women will build to protect themselves. It's about the ways that we will protect themselves. And at the end of the day, it's about women sticking it to the bad guy. And that is really, really satisfying. Don't get me wrong, there is a lot of abuse and violence that happens. It's very much about what happens when some of the best humanity of humanity, which is not solely exclusive to the women in this but like specifically about these women because they are in this situation gets confronted by some of the worst in humanity and how they manage to survive what has happened to them. Definitely not a novel that is afraid to stick to power and to have things to say about how women are treated and how systems of power are a oppress people. We don't go as far as we get in some of the other in some of the other books. But it's very much about persevering against power and against people who would want to harm you. And the, yeah, I can't, I can't go any further in that sentence without spoiling stuff. And number five is one that I've alluded to multiple times already and that it's a series. So if you like mysteries and thrillers, but you're like, but I don't, I want to follow these characters. I would love to have another book with them. Well, guess what? We do get more books with some of these characters. As I mentioned before, this series does follow the FBI team that we get to know in this first book. It does also keep in touch with characters that we have met in previous books. So we get to see some of the aftermath of these horrific crimes that they are seeking justice for or solving. We get to see that. We get to see how people choose to pick up the pieces or not pick up the pieces in some cases. You're going to end up attached to these characters and wanting to know more about them and wanting to know why, for example, Edison is the way he is. Guess what? We do get to find out all of his weird tragic backstory that is hinted at in the first book. We get all of the weird tragic backstory that is hinted at for Mercedes. And one of my favorite things is that each book is told in a different 
narrative style. It is still the same characters, there are parts of it that still feel the same, but at the same time Dot is tackling a different murder, she is tackling a different way that she is telling the story in certain places, and she's also like really tackling different issues for these books. So there you have it, five reasons why you should read The Butterfly Garden by Dot Hutchison besides the fact that I keep yelling at you to read it. If you are feeling chatty, go ahead and let me know in the comments, have you read this book? Are you interested in it? Do you have a different thriller that you would like to recommend instead? Because I am always looking for more thrillers. If you are not feeling chatty, but you still want to let me know that you watched to the end of the video, you're obviously going to leave a butterfly emoji because let's stay on brand, let's stay on theme, let's, let's, let's go with the butterfly thing. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you enjoyed this video, I'll go ahead and stick more five reasons why videos up here and whatever is newest on my channel down here. That is it for now my friends. Happy reading and I will see you later when we will talk about more wordy, nerdy things. Bye! In some cases they are, uh, yeah I won't, that's a spoiler, that's a spoiler.